Hey everybody, Sean here, and I hope you're doing well. And special thanks to all the people that have shared info on the Asbury Revival. Today we're going to try and answer a few questions about what is actually happening. But before we do that, let's agree that God is doing something here. And it's wonderful to see so many people being drawn to worship God. John 6:44 tells us that nobody can come to Jesus unless God draws them to him. So taking this at face value, let's pray that the people are truly being saved at this event. You may have even heard that this quote unquote revival is now spreading. So thank you Jesus that more people are gathering in your name. Now that's the good that's happening, but is this actually a revival as the media is promoting it to be? If we look at the book of 2 Kings, we have a true story of revival with King Josiah. When he found God's law, he tore his robe in sorrow, which was a sign of true repentance, and he read God's law to all the people. This resulted in tearing down all the idols of pagan worship, the witches and mediums were driven out of the land, and the long-lasting effects were the changed lives of the people in that land. So only time will tell if this is truly a revival or not. And we're going to look at some so-called revivals of the past in a moment. One thing you'll see posted by many people is that Bob Jones' prophecy is coming true because he said that when the Kansas City Chiefs win the Super Bowl, we'll know that God is raising up his apostolic chiefs. First off, there are no modern-day apostles as the New Apostolic Reformation have deceived people into believing, so that in itself disqualifies Bob's so-called prophecy. Number two, Bob Jones was supported by false prophet and storyteller Rick Joyner and played a big part in the false movements of the latter-day reign and manifest sons of God. He's also been promoted by IHOP leader Mike Bickle, you know, the guy that says you can be wrong with prophecy 85% of the time. And he was also removed from ministry for encouraging women to undress in his office so that they could stand naked before the Lord in order to receive a word. Not to mention, he's another heavenly tourist that's spoken of his trips like this one in the past. So as I stood before him, and I was getting ready to tell him, yes, Lord, because he only asked you, did you learn to love? And I was going to tell him I had, but he said, I want you to go back. And I told him I didn't really want to. But he said, go back, because I'm going to bring a billion souls into myself in one great wave. And I want you to touch a few of the leaders that I'm going to use uh, in that time. And I told him, I'll go back for souls. And that's why you hear people in the NAR speak about his billion soul harvest and get excited whenever they see so-called revival starting. But we know God told us in scripture of a great falling away or apostasy before Jesus returns, not a great revival as Bob says God told him. This verse also tells us not to let anyone deceive us. So is this a Bob Jones prophecy being fulfilled? I don't think so because I don't believe Bob Jones is a prophet of God. So why is this happening after the Chiefs won the Super Bowl? We don't really know. Once again, we should be thankful that many college students are choosing to go to church and worship rather than go out to the bars and party. But the timing of this is in question. The media has been a big reason for this growing, and for all we know, it could be because NAR members are behind it to make it look like Bob Jones really was a prophet of God, and to draw those people into their false movement. Because you'll notice it's false teachers like Sean Bowles that are promoting this, heretics like Todd Bentley that are excited about Bob's prophecy. And you'll find that people like Bill Johnson consider Bob Jones one of the greatest prophets of all time despite being involved with nonsense like palm reading. This is the main concern in relation of all the good that is happening. Are the people that are being drawn to this so-called revival just another group of emotional, experience-focused people and are going to be influenced by the leader in the NAR movement? We have to remember that the NAR crowd considered the Toronto blessing a move of God with people like this guy preaching. Luke chapter 1, verse, verse, verse. 
They considered Azusa Street and the Brownsville Revival to be moves of God as well. But tell me, do these baptisms at the Brownsville Revival seem ordained by God? To them, that was a move of the Holy Spirit. And when we see the woke movement that supports all that is ungodly getting involved with this, we have even more reason for concern. As this article says, many are attempting to make the case that a genuine move of the Holy Spirit has sparked a revival among a bunch of college kids gathered to sing songs, cuddle on the floor, crying and repenting of something, though nobody as of yet has said what they are supposedly repenting of. And once again, only time will truly tell. But as this clip shows, you can hear some strange screaming. So is this revival turning into a revival that becomes something like this? <laughs> Once again, only time will tell. But let's pray that God will use this event to draw people to him in true repentance and that he will protect them from the influence of those that are involved with the new apostolic reformation. We're going to leave it here for today, but feel free to leave your thoughts below. And until next time, take care and God bless.